and welcome to Memorial Day weekend service. We're so glad that you have joined us. We're so excited that you're here. We have already been here worshiping the Lord, so we're just going to jump right in. So let me just encourage you to lift your hands and join us in worship this morning. Are you ready?
The same God who's never late is working all things out.
So, Father, we just worship. We just worship the mighty name of Jesus. We worship. Lord, I love you today. I love you, Lord.
Good morning and welcome to Capital City Church Online. We are thrilled that you're here with us today to celebrate the presence of God and to celebrate those men and women who have given their all today on this Memorial Day weekend. On Monday, May 31st, Americans across the country will remember the brave men and women who gave their lives for this country. Whether you plan to observe the, this holiday with a parade, uh, maybe a service, a moment of silence, or taking the day off, or even just having a barbecue, just make sure you know this. The reason you're able to do any of those things is simply because someone paid a very high price so that you could enjoy the day. We're gathered here online to give honor where honor is due. And that is to remember some of our nation's greatest heroes, those who've sacrificed themselves for our freedom today. We would not be here online today without that freedom. And today we honor those heroes. And in the words of Mary Roche, it says, she says, heroism doesn't always happen in one burst of glory. Sometimes small triumphs and large hearts change the course of history. And we know that's true of those brave men and women today. And in the words of an unknown author, it says, our American flag does not fly because the wind moves it. It flies with the last breath of each and every soldier who died protecting it. So today we remember the acts of service and love, the actions seen and unseen, that blazed the trail for us as American citizens to unite together today with freedom and liberty. We owe them all our gratitude and our love. Thank you for giving all and laying it all on the line. Today we honor and we remember those who paid that ultimate price of laying down their life for our freedom and our country. Today they are remembered as well as their sacrifice. And may we never, ever forget that freedom is not free. Today we remember, and may God bless America. If you have someone in your family who has given their life and who's to the service of this country, make sure today that you take time to talk to your children and let them know who they are so that they're remembered and their sacrifice is never forgotten. We always want to remember have you ever thought to yourself, how will I be remembered? I think that's a question that each and every one of us ask ourselves from time to time. And for some of us, there may be 
a little bit of fear maybe behind the answer to that question. That if or when we're gone, would anyone remember? And if so, what would they remember? Would anyone know that I was even gone? What in my life would stand out that others would remember and talk about? A couple of weeks back, Harrison had a school project where he had to pick a character out of history and um, do this living wax museum. Um, and, and he had to be this character and had to, to learn about this person in history. And he chose a person um, of which I thought was pretty obscure. And um, I was kind of frustrated because it was kind of hard to find information or I thought it was going to be hard to find information on him. But his name was Wallace Henry Hartley. He was born June 2nd, 1878, and he died on April 15th, 1912. You see, there's nothing significantly recorded about um, Hartley's life uh, up to the point of his death. Hartley was the brave band director who played music on the deck of the Titanic as it sank into the Atlantic Ocean. He did so to bring peace and to calm what was a very chaotic situation. And let it be noted that this man was remembered not because he had a great name, but he was remembered for the one incredible act that he had done. And what he had done defied all reason. He should have saved himself. Yet he bravely chose to go against the normal response to take the time to serve others in an unlikely way at a very unlikely time. So he's not remembered for his great name or even his great music ability, but the one act that is still remembered to this day is him laying down his life in service to others. You know, my first thought may be like your first thought. What a waste. What a waste of precious time. He could have saved himself. I mean, no one was really listening to that music, were they? I mean, why bother? Well, there's a similar story in Matthew chapter 26, verses 6 through 13. If you want to follow along with me, I'm going to be reading out of the ESV. This is Matthew chapter 26, starting with verse 6. It says, Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been, this jar could have been sold for a high price for the money and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, being aware of this, replied, why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing? Thing to me. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you this truth, Jesus said, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. And here we are some 2,000 years later, talking about this woman for one act of worship. The thing she's remembered for is not her life previous, but it's for the one act that she did wholeheartedly unto Jesus. I want to talk to you this morning on the simple thought, things remembered. Things remembered. Oftentimes the things that we think will be remembered are oftentimes the things that are forgotten first and very quickly. However, the things that are done with pure passion, and are thing, those are the things that are done and, and they're remembered and not forgotten. The things that are done in the spur of the moment with, with heart and with passion, um, not giving regard to self, but just because it needs to be done. Those are the things that are remembered. And see, when people are engaged in those type of activities, like the violinist on the Titanic or this lady who anointed Jesus' feet, I'm sure they're not doing these things with the thought that one day this is going to go down in history or, or this is going to be remembered for a long time. Oh no, what, they're, they're, they're probably just 
doing them in the moment because it's their heart to do them. That's why they did them. You see, the things that are remembered are oftentimes disguised as mundane, maybe even strange or out of the ordinary. They go against the grain sometimes. They may even require sacrifice or a a sacrifice of position or a reputation or even life. Things not done out of rebellion or spite, but they're done out of devotion and out of passion and love. You see, just like the disciples in this passage earlier, it's easy to criticize when you don't know the cost of someone's sacrifice or worship. You see, just like in that story um, about William Hartley, it was easy for me to criticize Harrison for picking that, that guy up front, thinking there's nothing about this guy's life that's going to be significant. It's going to be a hard project. It's easy for me to say and do those things, not being the person who actually made the sacrifice. And as we know, Hartley sacrificed it all and went down with the ship. But it's oftentimes easy to criticize others um, for maybe what we think is just outlandish or just a crazy sacrifice. Maybe it's a crazy sacrifice of worship because the value that, that you may place on it actually may, not, may actually be less than the actual worth of it. What it's worth to the person making the sacrifice, that is. It didn't make good sense to those disciples to waste such an expensive perfume that could have been sold for what they thought was a high price. But as Jesus points out, logic and worship, they don't go hand in hand. What she did, what she had done was worth way more than any dollar amount that they could have come up with for that perfume. People may say, you know what? You're real emotional in worship. You kind of get crazy during worship and all this clapping and hollering and, and worshiping the Lord. Isn't that kind of, that stuff just not necessary. All that's just not necessary. Well, see, I always say that depends on this. Are you the person? Have you been through what that person has been through? Do you know what they're going through? You may know your dollar amount, of what you think it might be worth, but the true cost of its value and worth is only known by the one who's pouring out the oil, the one who's giving that worship in that moment. It's easy to stand back and criticize someone for their act of worship that may seem outlandish, that may seem crazy, that may seem just like, why are they even doing that? Let me just tell you, you can place a dollar amount on any of that that you want, but no one gets to place the actual value of it other than the person that is pouring it out. And the thing that I desire doesn't actually, you know, have a dollar amount tied to it. It's eternal. When I worship, I worship from my my innermost being. I worship from all that's within me. I don't care who's in the room because I know that everyone in the room can't do for me what the man up here can do for me. All I want to do is love him in that moment. All I want to do is worship him. All I want to do is just sit at his feet. And and sometimes it gets gets crazy to other people and they think, man, that's just not necessary. That's maybe out of line and and all of that. Well, I just want to be remembered as one who worshiped him with reckless abandonment. No matter who's looking or who's not looking, my audience is an audience of one. I want my kids to remember that their dad worshiped in the good times and in the bad times. And I want them to remember that the faithfulness of God by the way that I worshiped him, even when it was tough, even when it was hard. I want them to see a a, a man who is not afraid to praise and not afraid to worship his heavenly father for who he is. I want them to remember the act of worship that Jesus gave on the cross when he willingly laid down his life for us and how in one selfless act, he was remembered. In one selfless act, all of time and history was changed forever. In one selfless act, life eternal with him was made possible. And because of one man's selfless act, we get to live victoriously today. 
So my question for each and every one of us here is, how will you be remembered? What will your legacy be? Will you be the one that people says, oh, oh yeah, I remember. I remember them. I remember how they praised God even when they were walking through that difficult time and season of their life. I remember how they prayed. I remember how they sought God no matter what was going on. They always asked him first. They always sought his advice. Well, they remember how you raised your kids to know the heavenly father. Will they say, hey, yeah, I remember how they handled their finances and how they were so generous and how they gave on every occasion. I remember how they loved each other in their marriage and they were example for everyone around them. I encourage you today to start with one small act of worship. And it all begins with just finding Jesus wherever he's at, wherever you may be, in whatever room you may be in, whether you're standing or sitting, and break open that alabaster box and pour out your praise and pour out your worship on him lavishly, without restraint. It doesn't matter who's looking or who's not looking. Just begin to pour out your worship, begin to, to bless his name where you are, and begin to thank him, and begin that legacy of true worship, the things that will be remembered, that will be passed down from generation to generation. Let it begin today. Let it begin in you. Let it begin right now. To the point you're remembered by your acts of worship and devotion. No matter who it is, you're around or who is not around, just begin to praise him. And you may say, Matt, well, it's difficult. Everything in my life is upside down. It's, it's really hard to praise. It's hard to worship. Well, can I just say this to you this morning? The best time to praise and the best time to worship him is when you're in the middle of your circumstance, not just when he brings you through on the other side, because he's going to do that. But the best time is right now. The best time to, to be remembered for your worship is not when it's all over, it's in the middle of it. It's keeping your eyes on him, the author and the finisher of your faith. He's the one. He's the one that can bring you through and he's gonna bring you through as you praise and as you worship, as you stay focused on him and not the mess that surrounds you. That's how you will walk through all the mess that surrounds you is because you've stayed focused on him and your eyes are fixed upon him. The, uh, Psalms 121 says, I will lift my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. He's the one. Keep your eyes fixed on him. And then as you, as you come out of that moment of worship, you'll realize that everything you were worried about, everything that had surrounded you, everything that has tried to overwhelm you is suddenly of no bother and of no consequence to you because as you worshiped him, he brought you through it. That's what you'll be remembered for. So come on, now's the time to worship. The things that will be remembered are eternal things. And it's never a waste when you do them unto Jesus because anything that's done unto him is never wasted, never. You can't place value on it. So we have a choice. Are we gonna be the people who sit back like those people in the story with, hey, shoulda, coulda, woulda mentality? Should have saved that perfume, could have sold that perfume, would have had a better use? Or are we going to be the people who say, should have done it sooner? Could not have gone to a better use because it would have just been wasted on something that was dead anyway. I don't know about you, but I'm going to take my chances now while I'm still alive, while he's still in the room, while he's present with reckless abandonment and go after him. I want to be remembered for my lavish devotion on him. So when you ask yourself the question, how will I be remembered? I hope you've made a decision today to be remembered as a worshiper. Not just any old worshiper, but one who gives lavish devotion who goes all out with their thanksgiving and their praise to God. Because as you can see, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. 
wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. And the thing that she's remembered for is not because she saved all of Israel. No, it's because she chose to worship Jesus while he was still alive and in the room. Today, I challenge you to be remembered for that very thing. These are the things that will be remembered. These are the things that count today. If you're with us today, and maybe you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, but you want to know Him, I'm going to encourage you right now just to take a moment and pause because you do want your life to be remembered for the right reasons. And let me tell you, there's no better reason than to be remembered than someone who devoted their life living for Christ and helping others and assisting others to know Him as well. So if that's you today and and you say, I, up to this point, I, I don't know what my life would be remembered as, but I want to be remembered as one of those worshipers. I want to be remembered as someone who just, who went all out for a cause that's worth it, that's eternal. Today, it's as simple as saying these things and, and meaning them in your heart and praying this prayer, saying, Heavenly Father, pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, today I surrender my life to you. I surrender everything to you. God, I want to be remembered as someone who worships you wholeheartedly with everything that's in me. Take my sin, my shame, take my past, God, and redeem them with your precious blood. Wash me in your precious blood today. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for marking my life as one that will be remembered for your kingdom and for your cause. In Jesus' name, amen. Now for the rest of us, I like to take this time, this time of worship, and I want us to devote this whole time of worship to him this whole day. Just keep a mind frame of, you know, as we remember those who've given their life, Remember Jesus who gave his life for each and every one of us today. And stay in an attitude and and, and an atmosphere of just worship and pour your heart out. Take every opportunity to bless the name of Jesus and to praise him. Be remembered for those things today because they're the things that will be remembered. That will be your legacy. And that's a legacy worth leaving. May God bless you on this Memorial Day. We hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday weekend. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. May God bless you and all that you do. Let me pray for you as we leave. Father, today, God, I just bless all those who are watching. And God, I just pray right now, God, that they would rise up as true worshipers in this nation. God, that they would stand up and be counted for your name. God, that they would be... um, anointed from this time forward, God, to to pour out that lavish praise, to to go all out, God, in in their workplace, God, in, in their schools and in their homes, God, and wherever they may be, God, that they would be people who would be remembered for their outlandish love and, and the love that they lavish on you, Father, that the, the, they would be people that would be remembered for devoting their life, their talents, their skills, their abilities to you. And today, God, I pray for courage to stand up in the face of adversity. God, in a generation who may not know you, but Father, they would not be afraid to be counted for you today. God, the church would stand up in this hour and be counted for you as true worshipers. When everyone else is bowing down to all kinds of idols and all kinds of things, Father, that today your church would be remembered for those like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. God, that they would be remembered for standing up for you in this nation and declaring that Jesus is Lord. He's the only way. He's the truth and he is the life. Father, I thank you for brave men and women who are fighting for the kingdom today. And for those who have paved the way for us and gone on to glory before us, God, who who pioneered this path that we get to stand here today and we get to gather here today, God, that you would bless 
their effort, God, and multiply it in this generation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in this morning. We're about to shut off the live stream, so wrap up your conversations down below. We ask that before you leave, you would like and share our YouTube video, as well as subscribing to our YouTube channel. In the description box below, you can also find a few links to our other social media accounts, as well as our Give link if you're interested in supporting our ministry. Thanks again, and God bless.